welcome back. Tina here. So happy you could come back and join me again. First of all, before I even start this video, I want to apologize for the lighting. It is Michigan. It is dark. It is gloomy. It is gray. I have literally no natural lighting. I got lamps and umbrella lights and lighting all over the place. And I'm looking at the viewfinder right now and I can still see that this is not the greatest lighting. I apologize but we're gonna make it work. Today, I am talking about tips and tricks for going to Universal Studios, where we just got back from. I went to Hogwarts, baby. If, you found on my, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know I love all things Harry Potter. My youngest son, Casey, is a chip off the old block. He just finished reading all seven books back in October. And right now, he read a couple of books to take a little break from the Harry Potters. And as of the moment, he's actually reading The Cursed Child as we speak. So yeah, I raised a little, a little Gryffindor. I did. He, in fact, he tested on Pottermore. He is a Gryffindor. So am I. But anyway, this video is going to be about all the things I've learned how to do at Universal Studios. Before I went this time, this was my second trip to Universal. And before you go, you always want to watch like, YouTube videos and things. And I watched a bunch of them, but honestly, I really, this is the video I needed. It really is. This is the video I needed. So I'm going to record the video that I wish I had seen before I went to Universal Studios again for the second time. The first time you go, you're just overwhelmed. I mean, just the sights, the sounds, the dragons, the, the rides, it is overwhelming and amazing and breathtaking. This time around though, my second time, I was really able to pay more attention and I figured the ins and outs of how to get the biggest bang for your time. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. And my first tip that I will swear by is if you're an out-of-towner, stay on site. There are several hotels you can choose from that are part of the Universal Studio umbrella. There is the Lowe's Royal um, Cabana, there's the Royal Pacific, which is the hotel we stayed at, and then there's the Portofino Bay, and then the Hard Rock Cafe. Um, the one we stayed at, we didn't stay at the cheapest, we stayed at the second cheapest. And we stayed at this hotel both times. And we had wonderful service there. It's a beautiful room. It's a great environment. And I highly recommend the Royal Pacific Hotel. Um, there is a huge bonus to staying on site. You get an hour early admission and the whole family gets fast passes for the duration of your stay. If you do not stay on site, you stay at a hotel that's like five miles away, you may save money on the hotel room, but you're going to lose out on time. And to purchase a fast pass in the park is like $100 per person per day. I kid you not, the fast passes are outrageously expensive to buy them if you're an off-site um, customer, part goer, whatever you, whatever the term is. So you will save money by staying on site. Even though it may not look like that initially, you will save money. Unless the fast passes don't mean anything to you. If you don't care about getting a fast pass, then stay on an off-site hotel. But here's the thing about the fast pass. There are two lines for every ride. And for the one ride, for the one line, the fast pass, less than 15 minutes. I don't think there was a single line we stood in where we waited longer than 15 minutes. Many times the fast pass line, it was under 10. So if you're looking to pack in as many rides as you possibly can, you want a fast pass because the same line that we stood in for 10 minutes, the non fast pass people are waiting up to two hours. It's not an exaggeration. And initially we felt guilty, <laughs> you know, it was like just cutting straight to the front of the line. 
but then you realize you know, you paid for this. So there's really nothing to feel guilty for. You you did pay for this. <gasps> Boo! Hello, baby. Come here. Come say hi. Kitty hi. Hello. <laughs> She's been super lovely. She was left home alone while we were in Universal Studios for the week. So she's been super duper loving and affectionate since we got back. But anyway, back to the fast passes. They are so worth it because you just, you zip through the lines, lickety split. And if you're, especially someone like me who has difficulty standing and walking on concrete for hours on end, you know, if you're a person with disabilities, a fast pass is a must. It really is a must. I could not have done Universal Studios without a fast pass. It just, it wasn't even an option for me. So that is tip number one. Stay on site, get the fast passes. My second piece of advice, you've, you're at the hotel, you're on site, you've got your fast pass, you get to go to Islands of Adventure one hour before it opens. The park for general admission opens at 9 a.m. But if you are an on-site theme park goer, you get to go into the parks at 8 a.m. And the first day we were there, we did the same thing everybody else does. We got on our little water taxi, we got to the park, we got through the gate, and we made a beeline for Hogwarts Castle. It's an amazing ride, oh my God. So we did though, we, we got straight into that line for the castle ride. But here's the thing, at eight o'clock in the morning, everybody is a fast pass person. Everyone is someone who's staying on an on-site hotel. So at eight o'clock in the morning, your fast pass is pretty much useless. So I do recommend doing the long line one time. You really wanna do it one time because you wanna go through the gardens and through the herbology and through all of, of the turnstile maze that is the castle. You really wanna do the whole line one time because the great thing about Universal is they find a way to entertain you while you're in line. They make waiting in line feel like you're not really waiting in line. but. Uh, after you do the castle that one time where you do the entire line, the next day, it doesn't serve you any purpose to go straight into that castle line and do the whole line and wait 45 minutes to do the castle ride. It really doesn't because that's where everybody else has gone to. Go to the hippogriff ride. We learned this by day two and by day two, we rode the hippogriff ride three times in under 10 minutes. I mean, I, I kid you not, nobody, nobody was at the hippogriff ride because they're all in line for the castle. So yes, by day two, wait and from eight to nine o'clock, go to Ollivander's, stand in line, get your wand, go to the hippogriff ride, ride it several times, let your children do magic in all the windows. And then at nine o'clock, your fast pass goes into effect at the castle. And then by nine o'clock, you can do the castle ride in under 10 minutes. So that's my second trick, second tip. Don't run for the castle. Go to the hippogriff, ride that roller coaster several times. Go to Ollivander's, hit the shops, browse Diagon Alley, or not Diagon Alley, Hogsmeade. And then by nine o'clock, then you can either get in the line to go on the um, Hogwarts Express to go to the other park or do the castle. Or by nine o'clock, the whole park is open and then you can do anything that you want in either park if you have a park hopper pass. You will need a park hopper pass to do both parks. And trust me, you want to do both parks because the castle in Hogsmeade is in Islands of Adventure, Diagon Alley, the Green Gots ride, that's all in Universal Studio side. So you do need a park hopper. My next big, big, huge, huge tip for Universal Studios is to buy your Harry Potter merchandise before you go. 
I cannot stress this enough. As much as I love Universal Studios and everything Harry Potter, the truth of the matter is these parks are designed to drain you of money. Everything costs money. Everything is priced to the roof. It's, it's unbelievably expensive. So if you show up with children, those kids are going to want robes. Guess what? A Harry Potter robe or a Gryffindor or Slytherin, the robes are $115 each. The kids are going to want wands. A plain wand that doesn't do magic is like $44. A wand with the eye, the digital eye that allows them to do magic, that wand is like $55, all right? Uh, lanyards, the kids are gonna want lanyards. You actually need a lanyard to keep your fast pass and your ticket in. You're gonna want a lanyard so that you can keep this information with you at all times. Because not only do you have to show your fast pass to get into the fast pass line, halfway through the line, someone's going to like zap it again to verify that you haven't jumped lines and you're not trying to pull a fast one. So you're gonna need a lanyard. And they don't give you lanyard, they don't give you anything for free except water. You can get a cup of water. Other than a cup of water, you're paying. You're paying for everything. So this is a lanyard that I bought at Halloween USA or Spirit USA or something, Spirit Halloween. I got this one for $5. To buy the lanyards at the park is about anywhere from $12 to $20, depending on which lanyard you buy. I also know you can buy these lanyards online, Amazon Prime. I'll try to link one below if I can find one. But you can get lanyards on Amazon Prime for like seven, eight dollars. Again, right off the bat, that's about a six dollar savings just on the lanyards. And every member of the family will want to have a lanyard for the purposes of showing your park pass and your fast pass. This tie was purchased on Amazon Prime. I bought it for Casey for part of a Halloween costume. I believe I paid seven to eight dollars for this tie. It is a very, very nice tie. It's labeled with the Harry Potter label. It's made out of, I don't know what it's made of, but it feels very silky. It's not silk, but it feels very silky. And again, seven, eight dollars for the tie. This exact tie to a T at the park is $32. 32. I mean, when I saw the price of the tie, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Seven or eight dollars versus 32. That's a no brainer. And again, if you're there with two, three kids, now you're talking that price per kid. The next thing, excuse me, kitty, my cat's laying on the robe. This is Casey's robe. This was bought from Amazon. Uh, he's 11, so I got him a large, and this robe cost me $24. And I admit it is made of like a, a felt material. It's very soft. Now, the, the robes at Universal Studios are made more of like a, a rayon or a, like a more smoother material. It's a little more silky looking but this robe was $24 versus 115. And I had several parents ask me while we were down there, where did you get your robe? Because they realized right off the bat, it was not one of the ones that was being sold in the different shops down there. But my son loves this. This is his second one, because when he was younger, he had a smaller one. And so as he got older, I bought him another one. So. I mean, $24 versus $115. If you go just by the robe, the tie, and the lanyard, right off the bat, I've saved well over like $110 by buying these items before going to the park. That is my biggest tip. And again, if you have multiple kids, you're talking saving $200, $300, $400 per kid. Because when you're there, the children want these things. I, I saw so many parents 
buckling under the pressure because the kids there, they're begging for the robe. And you can see the mom and the dad, they're rolling their eyes going, holy cow, this is expensive. But you're there, it's in the heat of the moment, and they bought them. The parents bought them to please the kids. We even did the same thing with my son because when we went to Universal, Casey already has, where did it go? Aha. Uh -huh. Casey has the Harry Potter wand. We got this the last time he was there and it is the one with the digital eye. And this wand can make the magic happen. There are multiple locations throughout Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley where you move the wand in the direction indicated and something happens. In fact, I have some clips from when we were there. I'll insert a clip or two so that you can see what I'm talking about. But the children go nuts to make the magic happen. They just, they do. It's amazing. They love it. And I mean, I know they say Disney World is the happiest place on earth. I'm sorry. I gotta disagree. I I will swear that everything Harry Potter and Universal's is probably the happiest place on earth. But even while we were there, Casey really wanted the Elder Wand because right now he is reading The Cursed Child. He did just finish book seven. Book seven is all about the hunt for this wand. And we watched Fantastical Beasts of Where to Find Them, the Grindelwald Escape movie, the day before we left on the airplane to go, because we went Thanksgiving week. So Casey was obsessed with getting this wand. And I managed to hold off for two days. And finally, like, like by the end of the second day, he is just pouting and pouting and pouting. And it's like, okay, do I put up with this for two to three more days? Or do we just give in and buy the wand? So we did let him get another wand. He actually um, donated money out of his own bank account to help pay for this. This is not an eye wand. This is just a jerk. Because I said, listen, you don't need another eye. You already have one of those. But so yeah, even as well prepared as I was, we caved and bought another wand. So it's going to happen. The kids are going to beg for things and it's just going to happen. So that that's a big one though. Buy your stuff before you go. My next tip is for moms or dads, and that is to carry a backpack style purse or a small lightweight backpack if it's gonna be a dad, because dad probably is gonna carry a, a leather purse on his back. I actually did not take this bag and I regretted it. I took a small crossbody bag that was big enough to hold my phone, my power pack to recharge my phone, um, a lipstick, and a few odds and ends. And because the plan was, if you're a mom, you know what I'm saying when I say, you end up being a pack horse. You end up carrying everything. Honey, can you put this in your purse? Mom, can you put this in your purse? And the next thing you know, you're carrying a 20 pound purse on your shoulder and everyone else is walking around hands free. So I took my cross body bag thinking, I'm not lugging everybody's crap. You're gonna have to lug your own crap. But you know what? Honestly, in hindsight, that little cross body bag, it didn't serve my needs. I really needed a bigger bag. I needed something like this. And so if you have a backpack purse um, or you have a larger cross body bag, you really need to take this. I took the little one thinking I would be able to carry it onto the rides. You can't. Depending on which ride it is, they're going to make you put your bag in a locker. So the little crossbody purse didn't serve me anyway because I still had to stop, go put it in a locker. The lockers are free. And then after the ride, you went, retrieved your purse and the wand and all that stuff. So in hindsight, I wish I had taken this because this is big enough to at least throw in, you know, a bottle of sunscreen, uh, a bottle of water, um, you know, to hold a few more things than what that little crossbody bag allowed me to carry. So yes, you definitely want a lightweight 
small backpack if you are a family going to Universal Studios. Now, I don't recommend taking anything bigger than this though because it will encourage you to carry too much. Honestly, you are outside all day, you're on your feet all day, you're in the sun, you don't wanna lug around 20 pounds on your back. You really don't. So something small, something lightweight, but something big enough to hold a bottle of water or two, that would be a very useful thing that I could have benefited from had, had I taken that instead of the crossbody bag. The next thing I wanna talk about is, one second, I'm reviewing my notes here. Oh, back to the water. Drinks are insanely expensive there. You know, a cup of soda is $5. Uh, water, it's bottled water that you can buy for $4.50 <laughs> because they wanna sell you artesian water. Um, they do have these plastic mugs that you can purchase that are refillable. So like for, for $15, you buy this plastic mug and you can refill it anywhere in the park with any beverage you want, even icy Slurpees. So maybe if I were to do this trip again on the first day, I would have bought one of those cups and we would have shared. Um, but my big advice for here to save money on drinks, because you're always thirsty. You're walking, you're running around, you're having fun. You're always, always thirsty. Bottled water, because you're allowed to take bottled water into the park and crystal light, those little crystal light packets that you tear open, dump it in and give it a shake. Honestly, crystal light will be your best friend there, it really will. So it's a great way to save money just on the basics. Also, there are a lot of water fountains. So even once you drain your water bottle, you just have to go to a water fountain, refill it. The water in the fountains is ice cold. Put another packet of crystal light in there, a lemonade or a fruit punch and that is a quick and easy way to take care of your thirst without paying four to five dollars every time you want to drink. And then another one I want to talk to you about is food because when you're in the park, most of the food is burgers, chicken sandwiches, and french fries. And that's okay. I'm not knocking those things. I like burgers and fries and chicken sandwiches but not day after day after day. It gets old. And by the time you get home from this vacation, you're not gonna wanna eat a French fry for at least a week or two, maybe even more. I, I still haven't had a French fry since we've been back. So yeah, you do get sick of French fries. Uh, one of the best places to eat in Universal Studios is either the Leaky Cauldron in Diagon Alley no, or is that the Three Broomsticks? Actually, I think the Three Broomsticks is the one in Diagon Alley and the Leaky Cauldron is in Hogsmeade. This, they're both in the Harry Potter lands and the food there is amazing. You have fish and chips, a beef and lamb stew and a bread bowl. Uh, you've got really nice sandwiches and salads. There's a Oh, not pigs in a sauce. Oh, I can't fit toad in a hole. One where it's like beans and sausages on toad. I mean, there, there's a wide variety of really good, hearty food in the Three Broomsticks and the Leaky Cauldron, which is a very nice change of pace from burgers and french fries, which is what's pretty much available everywhere else in the park or pizza. You can get a lot of pizza in the park. So, but yes, definitely check out the Leaky Cauldron. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of at nighttime is City Walk. And again, if you go to the Hard Rock Cafe or to the um, NBC Sports Bar and Grill, yes, there's a lot of burgers and french fries there. But there's also some other restaurants. There is an Italian restaurant. Um, I wanna say Viva Italiana, but I know that's not the name of it. I can't think of the name. But then there's also Antajitos, which is a Mexican restaurant. Oh, did we enjoy the food there. The Mexican restaurant was to die for, it really, really was. You can eat very well at City Walk and Universal Studios. You don't have to live on chicken sandwiches, burgers, and french fries. But I'm not gonna lie, it's expensive. 
just if you're a family of four and you're eating at City Walk for dinner, it's going to be a hundred dollars. End of discussion. It's going to be a hundred dollars. If every person is drinking a beverage and mom and dad's having a cocktail, now you're up to hundred and fifty dollars. That's it. It just it is what it is. And you know, the first night we were there, my husband was just like, "Holy cow, this is expensive." And I literally just looked at him and said, "You know what?" Just go with it. This is, you know, we don't do this very often. Don't think about it. Just enjoy the moment or else you'll spend the vacation miserable thinking about what it's going to cost when we go home. And, and I'm not saying charge. We, we actually prepaid for everything but food. We bought the tickets in advance, paid for them. Bought our plane tickets in advance, paid for them. So once we went to the parks, everything was paid for accept our meals and you know what I just enjoyed it I, I accepted it. it is what it is this is what it's gonna cost I'm gonna have fun here I'm not gonna fret the small stuff I'm gonna enjoy myself the last big piece of advice I can give you is for someone with disabilities the electric carts the first day I was there I did not get an electric cart I went at a slow pace and I kind of held my own. I did okay. We did take a short break in the middle of the day where I went back to the hotel, iced the foot for a little while, and then we went back. But honestly, on day one, I was okay. You know, I was on adrenaline and excitement and I was having a blast and I was really okay. Day two, it all caught up with me. And you know, we got there at eight o'clock in the morning. By about 12.30 on day two, I was starting to experience a lot of pain in Frankenfoot and my knees. But we were there with friends from out of town that we don't get to see very often. They live in St. Louis, we're in Michigan. And so we planned this trip a year in advance because that if you're gonna meet out of town friends and relatives at Universal Studios, you need a year to coordinate around everyone's schedules. But I did, so I didn't wanna go back to the hotel room because I was like, I wanna be with her friends. You know, I, I very rarely get to see these people and I love them dearly. So I was trying to push through. Huge mistake. By two o'clock, we are in the very back of the park and the only way to get to the front of the park is on your own power. There's no golf carts or, you know, little quads zipping around the parks. There, there's, there's no help. And so I'm in the very back of the park. I'm in Diagon Alley and I'm sitting on a bench and I am crying. I, I, mean, I don't just mean like, you know, a little, I mean, I'm crying. I'm in so much pain. And I was like, I can't make it to the hotel room. And so at that point, my husband went to get me one of those electric carts, the kind you see at you know the mall or Target or the supermarket, the little electric carts. He went to go get me one. And I stayed in Diagon Alley with our friends. He comes back like a half hour later and he's like, there's no electric carts. Basically two hours, within two hours of the park opening, all electric carts are gone. They're, they're just gone, they're rented out. So he had to rent me a wheelchair and he, he pushed me in a wheelchair back to the boat taxis and then we had to abandon the wheelchair. So we paid like $20 for a wheelchair that we only used for about 45 minutes, literally just long enough to get me out of the park. And I went back to the hotel room uh, laid in bed, iced the foot for a couple of hours. And then we went back to the park later that evening. Well, actually, we didn't even go back to the park. I, we went to City Walk to have dinner with our out-of-town friends because they were leaving the next day. So we, we had our oh, like our last dinner there with them, and it was, it was nice. But, yeah, it was a huge mistake not getting an electric cart or EC. That's what they call an EC. I should have gotten an EC right away in that morning, but I thought I would be okay. I thought I could make it. And no, as soon as I started feeling pain, 
I should have gone back to the hotel room immediately, but I held on for another hour and a half and I overdid it to the point where we needed a wheelchair to get me out of there. It was, it was bad. Um, after that, I made sure to have an electric cart. And the next day, I didn't even go to the park in the morning. I Because by the time I woke up this morning, I felt like I had been in a train wreck. I was sore from head to toe. So Bill and Casey went to the park. They had fun for several hours. I didn't actually go to the park on the third day until about 3.30. I took a long hot bath. I relaxed. I just watched some YouTube videos on my iPad. Um, I felt really bad though, because I, here I am, I'm paying a fortune to be in Universal Studios and I'm sitting in a hotel room because I'm in so much pain because I didn't take care of myself. Um, so, but then for the rest of the time that we were there, I did have an electric cart. And the great thing about the electric carts is they have a key, like an ignition. So you can't take the electric carts on the rides, which is fine because what I really needed was to eliminate as much walking as possible. I was perfectly fine parking my cart, getting in line, right? And again, I had a fast pass. I only had to be in line a short period of time, riding the rides and then leaving the ride and getting back on my electric cart. I totally enjoyed the last couple days there because I was able to just save myself so much walking, so much time spent on hard concrete with my foot and my knees. So if you are someone who suffers a disability and you think, you know what, I'm gonna be okay, I don't need this, you do, get it. Because like I said, that first day, I was fine. You know, I thought, oh, this is, I'm, I'm gonna be okay. No, 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 no. Your body and everything, it's a cumulative effect. And it builds up and you're exerting yourself and you're exerting yourself and suddenly your body just reaches a breaking point and you literally can't go anymore and someone has to roll your butt out of the park in a wheelchair. So yes, but now to get the electric carts, you have to be there early, very early. So again, we would get to the park at eight o'clock in the morning because we were on site guests and we were able to do that and I would make a beeline straight for the rental to get my cart and have it for the rest of the day. So those are the tips I have to share with you guys. I apologize, this video is very long. I'm looking at the timestamps like, whoa, I talked for over half an hour. But again, this was all the information I wish I could have heard before we went, especially like the first time we went. So yes, if you're a universal newbie, I really hope this video helps you and I hope these tips and tricks will help you have a better time in the park. And with that, I'll talk to you later. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more from me in the future, click that subscribe button. Talk to you later.